In this lesson and the next lesson, we're going to be talking about object-oriented programming in Python. In this first lesson, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a simple class. And in the next lesson, I'll demonstrate how to use inheritance to create a derived class or a subclass from a base class or a superclass, depending on what terminology you're the most familiar with. I do want to warn you that we'll not be going into a whole lot of detail in these two lessons on object-oriented programming. There's just so much material we could cover, but what I want to do is give you an overview of how object-oriented programming in Python is performed without getting too bogged down in the details, because we're going to mostly just be seeing examples of classes as we go through our web programming and not really creating new classes all that much. So it's more important that you see the syntax and how to work with objects rather than learn too much detail about how to create them. So let's go ahead and get started. In this first lesson, we're going to create a simple person class. So we're going to start a script or program. We'll call it person.py. We begin a class in Python with the keyword class, followed by the name of the class. In this case, we're going to be creating a person, so we're going to use person. And then we follow that with a colon. First thing we're going to do is create a constructor. The constructor is what we use to create a new instance of our class. And so the constructor starts out with the first parameter being self, which references the current object. In many languages, it's called this. Self is always required as the first parameter in any method definition in a class. So we start with self, followed by the different pieces of data, first, middle, last for the name, and age to keep track of the person's age. Just to make this a little bit easier to read, I'll add spaces right here. There we go. Let me move down into the body. And in the body, we simply are going to take each parameter, except for self, and assign it to a corresponding data member. So we're assigning the first, middle, and last names for an object, as well as the age. And that's all we have to do. The next method we're going to create is what is called in many languages a toString method. And we're going to use it to display the current state of an object. So like after I make a change, I can call this method to see what the object looks like internally, how the data members have changed. So all it's going to do is return each piece of data in some sort of format. So you'll see how I'm doing it here. Now. I'm running out of room on this line, and I want to continue with one more piece of data, the age. But I can't do it on this line. I'm going to run off the screen. So I'm going to use the line continuation character, which is a backslash. Now, by doing that, I can continue this statement on the next line. And so now I can add the age to our two string. And notice that I have to convert that from numeric to string data type. So that's why we're using the string function there. So that wraps up the definition for the toString method. Next, we'll just do something to demonstrate how to work with data members. We'll return the initials of an object. And so that's going to be the first character of the first name concatenated to the first character of the middle name concatenated to the first character of the last name. So that's what initials looks like. And then finally, to demonstrate some arithmetic, we're going to write a change age method that allows us to change a person object's age. So there's our class definition. Again, like I said, it's going to be simple. But again, I just want you to get a feel for how objects are defined in Python. Now let's demonstrate how it works. We'll create this person object, call it a person. We have an age of 27. We'll call the toString method by writing print a person without putting a call to a method right here, then Python will automatically default to the toString method. Now let's change the age by adding two, call toString again, and then let's put that in a print, although we don't really have to. So let's save the file, go back to the command line prompt, type python person.py, 
could use a space right here. And we can fix that easily enough. Let's go back to the code. And right here, add a space. Let's check that to make sure it worked right. Go back to our command prompt. Run it again. There we go. So that's how you create a class in Python. Techniques are similar to classes in other languages like C++ and Java or C Sharp. There are, of course, some syntactical differences, but the main processes are still the same. So now we're ready to move to the next lesson where we're going to demonstrate how to use inheritance in Python.